Hey folks, welcome to the 9 to 5 to Freedom channel. My name is Alex and in this channel I will cover my journey of how I got where I am today, the steps that I took in uh, choosing my career, the investments that I have made, and where I'm heading, which is I'm trying to live a financially free life. There's many channels out there which you're probably already covering. Everybody brings something different to the table. So I hope to have something that uh, you would find valuable. Just wanna talk about my career choice and um, maybe this might spark some, some ideas for you. So like I said, I'm in my mid thirties and I've graduated uh, college back in 2012 with a bachelor's degree in electrical and computer engineering technology. At the time when I was uh, graduating high school, I did not know what I wanted to pursue in life and I had a friend of mine who was just a year ahead of me in school who's graduated and went to college and uh, chose this major now we were both kind of techie we liked um, electronics computers we liked uh, tinkering with that kind of stuff so I figured that'd be a, a very well suited path for me and I uh, bit the bullet and I went to school now this was a four-year degree so it took me the full four years to complete it and I've graduated. And since then I've had uh, careers in uh, three different companies. And I'll get into that in, uh, in a moment there. But um, just a quick lesson on uh, the career path that I've chosen and uh, if it worked out well for me or not. So like I said, my degree was in computer. Um, it was in electrical and computer engineering technology which was a technology degree. Now, if you compare that to electrical engineering, a double E degree, there were some differences. So we spent more time in the lab. Uh, we did more hands-on projects where we actually built the circuits, where we did a lot of uh, troubleshooting and uh, testing, and we took motors classes and PLC classes, and uh, just uh, a bigger chunk of hands-on than uh, you would have seen in the uh, electrical engineering degree. Now, side by side, uh, we share the same labs with the electrical engineering folks, uh, but our major classes uh, where we had theory were, were taught by different professors. Um, and uh, I feel like we didn't go in depth as the WEs did. Um, and that's uh, more in theory we did get uh, as far as like Laplace transforms, we did uh, differential equations. I, I think uh, overall, you know, I, I was really satisfied with, with, my, with my choice of major because I was a little bit more hands-on. I, I didn't really uh, do really good in um, tests or, or theory as much. So I feel like that served me pretty well. And, you know, if that's something that tailors um, more for you, then I would say that that's a very good path to approach. But um, really what I wanted to share from my experience uh, being almost 13 years out of college is uh, some limitations um, that I've had in my career with the choice of my major. Now, most recently I worked for a utility, uh, electrical utility company. And um, one of the weird things about the electrical utility company, and I'm not sure if it's like that across the board everywhere. so. If you have the same type of degree and you work for utility, let me know in the comments below if you've found same issues. But one issue I found is that my company does not recognize uh, my degree um, and give me the ability to hold an engineering title. So I cannot be an engineer uh, solely with my degree. I can be an engineering department, but I will have a technician um, title in, um, and I'll do the same, the same type of work that an engineer would. And the pay scale doesn't go up as high. There are several layers. There's obviously like engineer one, two, three, four, five, and technician, we also have one, two, three, four. Uh, so every level is slightly less than an engineer would have. And I found that to be a bit discouraging, uh, considering that I have you know, a four-year degree, it's, it's a technical degree. I'm doing the same type of work as the engineer is doing. So I, I found that to be um, 
I feel like I got cheated in college. Like this wasn't brought up to me up front. Like, hey, you might not actually be an engineer in the future. Um, so that's been a hurdle for a few years for me. And uh, one of the things that the company I work for offers is if you have your um, professional engineer license, then you can hold an engineering title. So if you took your FE and then you took your PE licensing, um, then once you have that PE and if you have a, a technology degree, then you can be an engineer. Um, and that was another pitfall in my career was the fact that um, I was really just glad to graduate. I had a lot going on. I was I already had a job lined up um, right after college. I was ready to, to be married. And... Um, I didn't know too much about what this professional engineer was, what this FE exam was. So I really just uh, overlooked it and only several of my classmates in the class actually um, took that exam, I, as I recall, after college. Um, so really that that's not something I, I took advantage of. And uh, looking back, that was probably my mistake for not really looking into it. So if you're in school right now, or if you're looking to pursue any type of engineering field, I would highly strongly recommend um, right after you graduate, you take that FE exam. Because the issue um, that I've um, came across is I've, I've tried to take that FE exam 10 years after school, after I tried to move up in my career. Um, and I realized that I, I just, I forgot everything. Everything that I've learned in college um, pretty much aside from Ohm's law, um, I haven't really used for, for 10 years or so. So it was like going back to school and, and trying to learn, relearn everything. And with everything going on in life, it was hard for me to, uh, to accomplish that. So I took an online class where I've studied and tried to prep for, for this class. Unfortunately, like I said, I wasn't able to really focus and get really caught up on all the information that I had to know. I did not pass the test. Um, one could argue that if I put more effort into it, if I studied some more, uh, possibly I could have attained it. Now there is, uh, depending on where you live and what state you're you're at, I believe most states have some kind of uh, time frame that you have to have between getting your FE and getting your PE license. And that is typically around um, four to five years, depending on what state you're in. So really, if I would have gotten my FE, I still would have to wait another five years before I can study and take my PE and get that licensing in order to progress in my career. So that was uh, some of the lessons that I've learned, um, you know, going through this and trying to progress in my company. Um, the other thing I learned is that, uh, at least in my company, uh, for you to be a manager over an engineering department, you have to have a WE degree. And me not having that, I really don't have an opportunity to, to ever be a manager unless I either, again, get my PE or I go back to school and get a master's in electrical engineering. So. Those are um, some of the downfalls of the technology degree. And uh, just wanted to share that uh, with, with everybody, just my personal experience. Now, this might not be like that with other companies, but, um, you know, I work for a Fortune 500 company and this is the policy that they have and there's really um, nowhere, uh, no way around it. So uh, if, if you are in college studying for it, if, if you're happy with just um, um, having a technician degree, a four year or even a two year, um, you know, th there's no shame in that. And I have no shame in, in having my degree. I was just, I was kind of baffled to, to learn that some companies uh, behave this way. So that's what this video is about. I hope uh, this was educational. Um, if, um, if you like this, please give me a thumbs up. I'm just starting this channel and, uh, subscribe. We'll see you on the next one. Thanks folks.